Yo, what is up folks, TripCG here, and I'm just back from the Axiom Now Mega Modern uh, at Edge Bastard in Birmingham this weekend, uh, where I played in a 122 player RC queue and made top 8 with Teamer Rhinos. And so I'm going to give a tournament report and deck profile, uh, and yeah, talk about how it went. Modern's probably my most played format in Magic Lifetime, but I don't get to play it very much anymore, just because of where I am. Obviously, you can see on the channel, I mostly play like Explorer, Pioneer stuff, but hey, it's still one of my favourite formats, and I keep up with it kind of vicariously through content and kind of keeping up with deck lists and developments. And so I thought Rhinos was going to be a good choice. Obviously, has a very proactive game plan, and then has a large amount of interaction um, for different matchups, and you can kind of tune one way or another. I had a couple of other things I was thinking about coming into the weekend. So I actually turned up with three decks, played FNM the night before, and then was like, actually, you know what, I'm going to play Rhinos, that's just like the good cards. And hey, see how it goes. So one of the options I was thinking about was Scape Shift. And was like, that's probably pretty good. I think it was pretty well positioned against some of the four color stuff. And then the other deck that I was thinking about, which is more about me just wanting to play cards that I want to play with, uh, was a Boros kind of blade deck. Uh, Boros Swords, almost Boros Scam, so you're playing Solitude, Fury, and Ephemerate. Um, and hey, that was a bit more of a fun thing to mess around with. If you're interested in either of those, I can do that profiles on those, but we're going to go through the Rhino set today, and I'll talk about the different matchups that I played. So there's a 122 player event, I ended up going 6 and 1, second place in the Swiss, I think, at the end. The tiebreak is really weird at the end, and nobody could really ID, which is strange, but hey. Um, so yeah, made top 8, lost playing for top 4, which would have been an RC invite, so more like a 4 slot one. So, the actual list. We, of course, have our 4 copies of Crash Green Footballs, make some Rhinos, hey. Proactive thing to do, and then kind of back that up with some disruption. That's kind of the game plan. We then have our eight cascaders, violent outbursts, and then along with that, shardless agent. Past that, there's some options. You're like, all right, cool. I've got my crashing footfalls. I've got my cascaders. Nice. What interaction do you want to play, and what other threats do you want to play? So there's been some like trending with people playing different numbers, but I'm playing two copies of Mark Tide. So we've been cutting down to one. I thought, hey, this is going to be a large tournament. Like, large number of players, very likely I play a different deck every round, could play them against not literally anything, but there could be some rogue stuff, let's just be really, really solid, uh, and kind of count for as much as possible, so I end up playing two copies of Merc Times and Threat, also like, hey, you get Chalice, you some other ways to win the game. And then in terms of, like, Disruptive Elementals, so, there's some choices. The first one I think I like to talk about is Fury. So I'm playing two Fury main deck with another two Fury sideboard. The reason for this is it's really good versus a lot of the rogue stuff. Um, it's really good against decks that I like to play in modern. Like historically I've done really well things like Infect, Green White Company, Bank Company, that kind of stuff. Um, and really like clears up some of those matchups. Play two, people have been cutting it. Like you can tune one way or the other, but I thought for a tournament this open, I'll play two Furies in the main, tune the board and just be locked up there. And the kind of like downside to that because there are only, only so many kind of flex slots you can kind of play, is I'm playing three copies of Subtlety. A lot of people are playing four. Um, Planeswalkers, Creatures, Good Against Scam. I'm only playing three in the 75. I don't have any more on the board, just in terms of like what I wanted to fit in the deck. I was like, okay, I can fit three. I would like to find space for the fourth. Didn't really fancy playing 61 cards. We're trying to cover a lot of bases, basically. I was happy with three Subtlety. I'd like to find space for the fourth, but not like at the price of Cutting Fury, and not at the price of Cutting some of our other interaction. And so, kind of to the end, we have two copies of Mystical Dispute and four copies of Force Negation. Four copies of Force is not really arguable. It's so good, it's a bunch of different things. It gives you interaction for a bunch of the other combo stuff, like versus things like Tron, Amulet, you just need to be able to interact with some of the stuff they're doing versus the big mana decks. It just shores up a lot, especially versus some of the random combo decks as well. Two Mystical Dispute is a tough one. I'm playing two more on the sideboard, but uh, would, again, like if you could play more cards would like to play for in the main deck. Um, versus, again, those big man decks is more like a mana leak, but then it's just like incredible interaction versus things like Merc Tide, you want to be able to fight through your spells. Teferi is one of the big things. And one of the things is that while the four color decks are still playing, all of them, Teferi on the whole is like, people have started talking about cutting it a bit more, um, and I'm not as worried about it. We do still have access to four in the 75. I thought, okay, two Mystical Disputes, kind of gets to the removal stuff. So two copies of Flame of Anor, Obviously, it's been really, really popular card in um, Rhinos. Draw two, destroy an artifact, deal five. I'm not playing Meter Vaults. I thought I'd mess around with it, but I really dislike playing the Colorless Lands. I want to be as consistent as possible um, over the course of like a, a long tournament. Like the amount of times like the Colorless Lands are going to hit you are bad. I am playing a Gemstone Caverns, but only just the one. Um, but yeah, two copies of Flame and Arnor. Uh, draws cards, kills things. 
both part of that. All very good. Other removal things. Three copies of Dead and Gone, and one copy of Dismember. Kind of replacing the fourth Dead and Gone here. It gives you a little bit better versus Scam. Obviously, four lives a lot of life, but it's often quite unexpected, and it gives you some interesting interaction things. Dead Gone is obviously incredible removal, kills all the early stuff, um, and also the three mana return, a creature control to your own sand, can be really getting you out of some tricky situations. Four copies of Fire and Ice. They're good for bad. Um, obviously, I played against a like Samwise Chatterfang combo deck um, in my, like, playing four top eight in round seven, and just getting to like. Uh, Fire a couple of things. Also playing at scales, which is really good. The other thing that's like kind of, I, it's not underrated because it it's always happens a bunch, but you just end up icing people's lands um, on upkeep just to like kind of like fog a turn, fade a turn. It's it's a bit of a time walk, but hey, there you go. What comes the fire ice? I didn't want to cut any of these basically. I was like, I must play these, I must play these, I must play these. Limited number of flex slots. That's kind of how I end up with the numbers I am. Lastly, four copies of Lorien revealed, just here everywhere. I did end up hard casting it multiple times across the weekend, uh, and it did serve me pretty well there. Um, but obviously, just more lands, more free stuff. Also, hey, nice with Mert Tide, and does everything. That's kind of the the the, the non land decisions. So as I said before, one gemstone caverns, just the one. I'm not playing another one on the board. I am playing a, a Besage on the board, um, but. Again, the colorless lands can be really, really punishing, um, and so just want to play one and be just super consistent. Uh, on top of that, playing a Besaiju and an Ottawara. Yeah, just great utility lands. Second Besaiju on the board for matchups like Tron, where we want to bring it in. Uh, and Ottawara, just like, hey, free interaction. Love that. Um, we have Fetches, so four copies of Mr. Rainforest, four copies of Scalding Tarn, and two copies of Wooded Foothills. And kind of like coming off the back of that, we had actually playing four basics, two each of Double Island and double forest so weird basic setup it's a lot of basics and i talked a bit about this is part of the reason why i only want to play one colorless land with the gemstone cabins um the reason being there are matchups where you want to bring in blood moon but also want to be able to cast subtlety and cast force of vigor uh and so hey landed on these numbers pretty great pretty great i did not regret the basics at all um didn't want to fetch for a basic mountain pretty much ever and so it's out really, really nicely and then obviously we have our one of each shock, and also a Ketria Triumph there, kind of holding everything down. The sideboard, I talked a bit about some of the numbers already. So one of the things we didn't talk about already is three copies of Endurance. Um, just really solid, Graveyard Hate, blah, 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 blah. can come in as an additional threat as well in some sticky situations. Um, kind of off the back of that, I've got some more Elementals, I've mentioned it before, but two copies of Fury. Creature decks, Mirror as well, should be able to like kill a Rhino. Kind of, you have some piece of interaction with the other Rhino, maybe like bounce it or something, and then um, carry on going and just beat down with it. Um, and also, just again, just insurance versus all these creature decks. Like, hey, I've got my four Furies in my seventy-five. I have a, like, I, my odds of winning this matchup is just always going to be pretty solid. Um, kind of off the back of that, we have a Tron package with two copies of Charmor. Um, these also come along alongside three copies of Blood Moon and then also of Seiji. Um, kind of similar things for Amulet as well. Uh, but again, like this is kind of reason why we're trying to... It's, it's not a surprise that we're playing any of these cards, really. Maybe you could feel like you play the fourth Blood Moon. Once to mix it up a little bit and diversify. And then also, yeah, this is kind of reason why we're playing the two, two split of basics as well. Um, so, yeah. And then the two copies of Mystical Dispute. For blue decks or big mana decks, we just need a counter spell. Like, it's really awkward, obviously, versus Tron. Like, hey, they get to you want to try and disrupt them so they don't get to get to like seven, eight mana early, and obviously, then you can start paying for stuff. But it, 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 it is what it is. And lastly, two copies of Force of Vigor, which I wish I could play more of. And I even wanted to play one of the main deck when I was initially like, oh, maybe I'll play Rhinos. I was like, can I fit one of the main deck? And you look at the number of green spells, and you're like, no, no, you can't really. Um, which is a shame, but hey, because obviously, there's really well positioned in terms of like all the bean stuff going on like it, there's a lot there's really not very many matchups where this is dead um and so hey two copies of force of vigor um was really really clutch played against scales tron uh did play against amulet but didn't draw them unfortunately that was my top eight match uh, i lost playing for an rcm uh, for, for a regional invite um and yeah so that's the deck i'm actually super happy with it like i'd like to again i'd like to find room for the subtlety but i'm not sure what i'm cutting like the sideboard i was pretty happy with I used basically all the cards, um, and them really solid, but was really happy with the list overall. So the matchups I played, seven rounds plus quarterfinals, 
played Tron round one. Was on the play game one, but kept like a one-land hand with the warrior revealed, and then had like an ice for turn two. Just need to hit an extra land, and then we can make rhinos. I was like basically delayed off rhinos by turn, and ended up losing game one, but came back games two and three, countering kind of spin back one call a couple of times. Not too bad there. Round two, play against Hammer. I was a little worried about this because, like, while I've like pay attention to Modern a lot, I've not played some of the matchups as much. I know in theory how the matchups are guys. No, in theory what like which cards are important to count to like interact with and how I'm gonna probably die. But hey, um, was able to pretty cleanly win versus Hammer 2-0. Just like the Furies came in handy handy there. Force of Vigor is just such a house as well. Round three, playing against the Mirror and right, Rhinos. I think I probably drew a little better. One of the games I managed to win through like just going in on card advantage, just casting Lorian Revealed, which is pretty cool. And then also just having Fury and just being able to kind of spin Rhinos and just beat, have more threats. Round four, playing against Scam, as I mentioned, like they had a pretty weak hand game one. They were on the play and just went for like a Jamaica Fury. And I was able to force negation, the kind of reanimation spell. And was able to kind of cleanly win that one. And then game two, which is the same. We're kind of like top decking a little bit, both playing off the top, but I kind of actually I just I drew really well. I drew like rhinos into important interaction piece and it was kind of over. Round five plays against creativity. Um I actually got a deck registration error. Uh I had just always double check, always make sure. I've been playing magic tournaments for like twelve years, and <laughs> I wrote Besage Who Endures in my main deck, which is the correct one. And I also like made a point to be like, oh yeah, who injures? And then in my sideboard, I just wasn't paying attention. I must have been concentrating on something else and just wrote Besagey. So I got a game lost there, and then won game two, but lost game three. I got uh in game th in game three, I got Ren and Six Emblem re uh, retrace silenced like out of the game, which was nuts. So that was round five, round six. I played against Scales. I was pretty worried. Again, it's a deck that can kind of kill you out of nowhere, and it's like, all right, can I do the maths as well as I can do the maths? Am I going to be able to sequence my removal spells and do things? I got stopped game one. Game two was like, fairly close to managed to like get, just trample over with some rhinos before they could really set up. And then game three, I had a hand with like double force of vigor. Uh, got to fire two things away. It was, yeah, I just had a really nuts hand game three. And round seven, I played against like Samwise, like Chatterfang. Academy Manufacturer combo. It's not a deck I've played against much before. It's the kind of thing that I generally like to play a modern, so I was really interested. My opponent got pretty unfortunate, I think. They had like multiple collector companies into basically nothing, whether that be like just a halfling or like just a Gilded Goose. Um, and then on the other flip side of that, I think I had Fury, Fires, just was able to interact with stuff. Managed to fortunately win that. Um, and then, yeah, so top eight. I finished second in the standings, so I got to be on the play in top eight. Um, I was playing versus Amulet and just kind of. Game one, I had Force of Negation for the turn one amulet, but then they had another two, and then kind of eventually lost. But then game two, I um, mulliganed a little bit, kept a hand without too much interaction. I was like, okay, I can make rhinos on the play. I can maybe interact with something here. I just never really got the opportunity. Like game one, I think there was a point where like, okay, if they go for like Titan now, try and get Valakits, I can bounce a Dryad to turn them off. But then, like they had, they they had enough resources to be able to go get a second dryad before they did that, and just wasn't able to do it that way. Game two just made rhinos, was unable to interact enough, and eventually lost to Titan for two Valakids. A lot of Titan for eventually three Valakids. Um, and hey, yeah, lost playing for the regional invite. Still pretty happy. Like walked over like effectively like three boxes. I took a bunch of prize sticks and took um fifty promo foil uh fifty. Foil promo packs, um, which opens some pretty cool stuff, which photo on the screen now, hopefully. And yeah, it was a great time. Axion runs some like amazing events in the UK. Then he was super nice. Tom was raw run. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. That is Team of Rhinos. And some kind of like context to my matches and my choice card choices. If you're interested in seeing the kind of Boros Blade deck, which I, I think is really, really sweet, but not as like, it's a... It's not got a proven track record, right? It's not as consistent, I think. And also, I think Scape Shift would have been a good choice, but you're kind of passing up on the chance and you're, you're not going to have as much interaction or well, control of your destiny, if you like, if you play Scape Shift. Um, there are points for, like, outplay and stuff, but, like, a lot of the time, you're relying on either your opponent not being able to interact with you or just kind of being faster. And opting for Rhinos is the right choice for me. Just, hey, um, being able to be able to at least try and interact as much as possible like you have a really proactive game plan and a bunch of free spells but these are sweet decks and if you're interested in seeing either of them do let me know in the comments and i will put something together for them i'm still um because i top eight and i qualified for the axion invitational which is next month um and so that that 
the winner of that is will get a Pro Tour invite, which is really, really cool. Um, I've still no idea what we're going to play in that. It might be Rhinos. It's a mixed format tournament, um, modern and Lost Caverns of Ixalan Limited, I think, draft. Um, we'll see. It's uh, going to be an interesting one, I think. And I might play something a bit spicier. But hey, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, like, like it, share around, and uh, subscribe if you're not already. I really appreciate it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a great day.